Hello everyone, I am the Tycoon. You are tuned in to the very first episode of Tea with the Tycoon. It is back from Facebook Live to YouTube to you. Now, a little bit about me. I am the professional wrestling manager for this era of professional wrestling. So, I used to do a Facebook Live post called Tea with the Tycoon and it was a very popular show. It helped me to make enough money to pay off some of the fines I'd actually accumulated for doing something very naughty which was trying to underpay a prostitute who actually turned out to be an undercover police officer. And to avoid going to jail and paying hefty fines, I decided to do community service. Well, guess what? I didn't learn from my previous lessons and I'm back doing this. So I've got more fines I've got to pay and that's why I'm doing this now to generate some quick cash. But I thought I'd come to you guys through YouTube to help me get my fines paid off. <coughs> So, a little bit about the show. The format is going to be short and simple. You will have business tips from me as a tycoon because you know what? Every tycoon has to be good at business. So let me impart those knowledge over to you. And also on top of that, you're also going to have a 30 second movie review. You know, I do like Chris Stockman, Angry Joe, and of course, Jeremy Johns for what they do on YouTube with their movie reviews. It's phenomenal. So I thought, why not grab a piece of the pie? I do like movies too. And finally, we are going to have a special segment for our 10 minute match. It's a new segment where it is within 10 minutes with a personality or someone from the professional wrestling industry or from business to help see you uh, and give you a little bit more of an insight. So without further ado, I'm going to start with what I always used to start with, shout outs. So shout outs to me, because I'm amazing. The Tycoon. And if you don't understand that, you gotta go back to school. So says me, the Tycoon. Yes, I like saying the Tycoon an awful lot. <laughs> uh, but also shout out to the Hit Set, who are the professional wrestling tightest tag team out there, never say die. Rory Johnson, you know, Roy Johnson, WWE NXT star. The Arsenal Wrestling Academy, which is now known as OVA, the OVW. Uh, some of the Facebook groups which are out there, UK Pro Wrestling. Uh, also to Adam Stott, coach and if you haven't seen this guy's work he is amazing you know he returns people around and more importantly gives help to those who are the most troubled at a price of course he's not cheap uh, but getting on with all of that it's time now to get on with my 30 second movie review So it's time for the 30 second movie review. So what did I watch? Well, there's been so many great movies which have come out there. You know, it's hard to pick, you know, the most, you know, I saw Avengers Infinity War last year, Endgame this year, which was a very good follow up. But more importantly, the movie review I'm gonna do for you today is Spider-Man Far From Home. It's actually a good movie. What, do you think I'm a professional movie critic? Go out there and watch it, you will thoroughly enjoy it. It's a great night out. And if you don't enjoy that kind of movie, then you know, you, you're one of those art housey type of people that, you know, just suck. So, you know, and hey, look, please, don't come at me in the comments because you will get a reply back saying how stupid you are. Um, anyway, uh, moving on from all of that. So if you did enjoy Spider-Man Far From Home, or if there's any other movies that you'd like me to review, leave that in the comment section below. So my 30 second movie review may have been a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but it did cover the 30 second period. And of course, I get my inspiration from Angry Joe, Jeremy Johns, and of course, Fritz Stuckman. So why not get a piece of that pie? Uh, but now it's time to move on to the business tips from the tycoon. So the business tips for this show is going to be one of the most important things if you do any kind of business. Businesses are always made up of many different factors, but really you can break them down into two halves, sales and servicing. If you've got a great product and you can service very well, that is brilliant. But unless you sell it, guess what? No one's going to ever get to this part here. So what you need to do is improve on your sales techniques. People such as Brian Tracy, Zig Zagler, these guys will help with sales techniques to help build up your confidence. 
I will strongly recommend the Time Old Classic, The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. He breaks it right down. Whichever industry you're in, and if you're working for yourself, then you definitely know that every penny counts. Invest in yourself. Learn sales. Learn how to become confident at sales, whether it's on the phone or face-to-face. -face. Emails are good. Facebook ads are good. All these things are good to generate some kind of leads, but in order to close, and turn it into a deal, you have to master the face-to-face. -face. You have to master doing it over the phone. You have to master your personal abilities to interrelate with other people. And if you don't know how to do that, then one of the best places to get started is with networking. Go out to a networking group local to your area, and there's different types of networking groups out there. There can be the very, how can I put this, detailed, meticulous, to the most relaxed. So the detail and meticulous, you will be there every single week. You will be doing presentations every single week. You will be learning and you will be trying to develop yourself. The most relaxed ones, you are just mingling around and trying to find that right person, but it helps to break the ice. And that's the most important thing. You learn those skills, you will be able to get to the service inside because you would have been able to close your customers to get the order. So that's my business tip for this episode. The next one, well, if you've got any business tips, leave it in the comment and what I'll do, I'll check it out and relay it back to you. Now it comes to that part of the show that you guys have been waiting for. My 10 minute match. My 10 minute match is all about a one-to-one -one interview. It's like we're a personality from the wrestling industry, Someone who works behind the scenes could be someone who's actually in the ring. More importantly, it gives you a chance to see what goes on behind the mask. What goes on behind and when the curtains are drawn back. Because if you go to a wrestling show, it is the show part that you've seen. But the hard work that goes behind it to put on the show sometimes isn't very well demonstrated. And I thought I'd give this as a platform to help those guys that are when well truly some of the unsung heroes of the wrestling industry. And more importantly, it gives you a chance to actually understand more about us. Even if you're not in wrestling, even if you just like business tips and just want to hear interviews, by all means, this is the section for you. So without further ado, my 10 minute match for this episode is with Santiago, pro wrestling ring announcer. And he works with Rise up in somewhere up in the north of England called Leeds. Uh, I think it's Leeds, you know. It doesn't matter. If you're not from London, then you don't matter at all. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to our 10 minute match. Here we go. So, I am the tycoon and I forgot my tea. Got mine here, mate. Ah! I'll smile me my again. Rather nice, my rather nice Star Wars cup with uh, lightsabers on it. So. You just can't get the staff now, mate. Seriously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you need to talk to your assistant, mate. I, well, I had to find my virtual one, so I had to get a new one. <laughs> and make it practical, but that was just as bad as getting the virtual one in. But I want to thank you today for joining me with the Tea with the Tycoon. Uh, ten minute match meet. Uh, ten minute match segment, and basically what this is, it gets us a chance for people who are in the industry and even outside to understand what makes you work, especially as you're not what we would class as an in ring talent. No, I suppose not. No. I'd say um, I was an auxiliary talent. And tell you what, it works. Because again, you know, you've you had a lot of popularity based upon, you know, not your persona, but your, your ability to project your voice and bring the audience in. You know, you almost make me, remind me of me. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, this is, this is basically our 10 minute match. So we're going to do, we're going to go for this. It is okay. 10 minutes. So even if. You're in the middle of a conversation, you're in the middle of a answer, and the 10 minutes goes up, well... Okay, all right, all right. So, I've got the questions ready, I've got the timer on, so let's get the time. Hit me. 
Let's get the 10 minutes up. All right, so here we go. So, Jason, sorry, Santiago, Santiago. Yes, uh, yes. So tell me. Who's Jason? <laughs> Who's good question. Jason? Look, for you, I actually did try and grab the hair as well, yeah? It's not going to ever be like the mullet, uh, but I am working on it. So what did you get into the, the wrestling industry? Uh, a, ch a chance occurrence, really. Um, I was running a sandwich company and I was dropping some sandwiches off to my tattooist and very close friend, uh, Chainsaw, Rich Soddy, uh, of, of Sith Tattoo. And uh, he had the bulk in getting uh, Star Wars stuff tattooed on his belly. Um, uh -huh. uh, we got chatting, we got chatting about wrestling. And uh, after I met him once or twice more, he was like, why don't you come and try out? And I was like, well, my back's made of glass and my knees are made of jelly, so uh, I probably couldn't compete. And he was like, well, you, you're very confident. You've got a good voice, like MC. So I went down and I, I joined in on the training session, absolutely gassed out after five minutes because I'm quite unfit, or was quite unfit. I'm working on that at the moment. <laughs> and uh, I got in the ring and, you know, did my thing. And the rest, they say, is, uh, is history. And that was three years ago. So in the game for three years now. Nice. And yeah. again, the presence that you made, you know, from the, the sort of business background and the confidence side of things, that's helped an awful lot to translate across into a public environment where all eyes are on you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing. It makes me really happy getting out there and entertaining people. That kind of feels like, uh, what I'm here for on this crazy spinning rock. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy entertaining people. Good. So what was your background before? You mentioned sandwiches and your own sandwich business. Um, well, I, to, pay, to pay the bills, um, I've been a professional cook for almost 20 years now, about 15, 16 years, maybe a little bit more. Um, all over the country, like bistro restaurants and pubs and uh, ran a vegetarian and vegan place for a couple of three years. Um, but there was always music in the background. I trained as an actor, um, been in lots of bands. A, a lot of people don't realize I'm, I'm a massive hip hop head and I was, uh, I was in a hip hop band for about three, four years. No uh, way. Yeah, so if there's anyone wants to step up and hit me with some bars, like. <laughs> uh, I I'm, might like, get. Anthony Matthew or Alexander Roth, they may want to step up a bit above. <laughs> the Wolf of Brawl Street. <laughs> I, I, can see, I can see a little battle going on, a little cypher with that guy. That would be fun. That would be fun. Well, you know, I mean, we, we talked about, you know, your hip hop background as well and, and your sandwich and chef work. So having moved from those sides, that kind of performance to where you are as being almost a focal point to drive a, a, a show, you know, yeah, as an yeah. MC, there's no denying it, a bad MC can kill a show. A good yeah, MC yeah. can build it up even more than just... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I consider myself like a heater. You know, yeah. I'm there to heat the crowd up. So when the guy's music hits, they're walking into an environment that they can be easy with because the crowd's already there. The crowd wants to boo the bad guys and they want to cheer the good guys. And my job's to kind of like just get that simmering just before they come out. And, you know, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Sometimes it's nerve wracking. Uh, there's a lot that people don't see like behind the, behind the scenes and trying to, trying to make sure the show does go smoothly. Um, and it can be stressful, but yeah. What was the question? <laughs> How have you felt the differences between those environments versus this environment? Because um, Yeah, I mean, when I'm in the kitchen and the proverbial S hits the F, it can be horrible. And I've, I've had some serious problems with it, like uh, mental health problems. Uh, from the pressure of, of being in such a shitty environment, really. Uh, it's not very glamorous being a chef. Whereas going and entertaining 
two, three hundred, four hundred people of a Friday or a Saturday night, and I'm all suited and booted. It does feel very gra- glamorous, um, and they're they're two very different worlds, you know. So Santiago is a guy who goes and entertains people, and uh, that Jason bloke, whoever he is, he's a, he's a guy who uh, goes and cooks and dances about in a kitchen and tries to stop himself from going completely insane at any given moment. So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a weird dichotomy. I think there is a real duality. Yeah, there's a real duality that happens within this industry, you know, or any kind of performance-based industry. There's you, the person, then there's the, you know, when the cameras are on, when the lights are on, there's goal time, or if it's live. Yeah. The other side of you comes out that you yeah. have to tap into. Um, who's been your sort of influences? Uh, Rich O'Brien from the Crystal Maze. Wow, uh, huge influence on me, and Rick Mail as well. Yeah. Like when I used to do improv and stand up and like beat poetry and stuff, a lot of it came from watching Rick Mayer as a kid and probably I shouldn't have been watching Bottom when I was 10 years old or 11 years old or whatever um but he had a real he had a real influence on my on my growing up and my performance style I mean I'd like to think I'm not such a a desperate sweaty virgin like uh Rick in bottom, but there's certainly an element of uh, kinetic movement. Like I like to move in the ring. A lot of MCs stand very still, and I've tried it, but it's just not me. I really have to engage on a physical basis with uh, with the audience. You know, I, I guess if um, if a, if a boxing promoter came up to me and said, "Hey, we want you to MC this show, but we want you to stand still," I would. You know, you have to adapt in uh, in 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 the business of entertaining people, you have to be able to adapt. Mm. Um, but something that I find is is the movement, is being kinetic, and that very much comes from Rick Mail. And I think a lot of my campy delivery is qu- like sometimes I'm quite campy and over the top. And I think that comes from Richard O'Brien. Um, just yeah. a big fan about how he carries himself and presents himself, like on shows like The Crystal Maze and Rocky Horror Show. And- yeah, I mean, I've seen Dan Barnsdale, uh, Barnsdale from uh, Rev Pro, uh, who does UPW as well. Um, who else is there? There's also Phil Seymour, who was World of Sport. These guys are all different because of their own persona. It's very animated. They'll bring something different and make sure that they do hype up the crowd. You've cut out a little bit, mate. That's okay. That, that happens. It's, it's Virgin Media. How about now? No! Got you back in, I believe. Are you back there? Oh, no. Okay, all right. That's I can't right. hear I, All I'm getting is... Technical difficulties, but you know, we'll get back on track. So very quickly, yeah, like Dan Barnsall, uh, <laughs> Phil Seymour, these guys, they, they, they bring an energy. No! You're back again. See, anything can happen here. I'm back now. Anything can happen with Tears and Tycoon. Uh, you know, and this is what happens. This is absolutely <laughs> fine. But swiftly moving on, again, I'll repeat. Dan Barzel and uh, Phil Seymour, they brought a lot of energy into their, their MCing. Um, you've told us some of the yeah. tools. And more importantly, you're on Tide, you're, sorry, you're on Rise. Uh, yeah, where else? Rise. Uh, well, I'm working for Rise this weekend. I've also got a show for Falling Star Wrestling oh, at Swanton Morning Village Hall. Uh, yeah. They're kind of like my home promotion, the closest one to me that I work for. Um, yeah. We've got some really fun matches with them. We've got a Circus Big Top uh, show. Yeah, well, I don't up. really care about that. No, because the oh, only okay. reason why I don't care about that is because they haven't taken on the Tycoon. And as much as I talk <laughs> to them, they still don't want to take on the Tycoon. Now, you said that you're going to put in a good word for me, but you're not going to, because I know you're oh. not, because you need to go back to school. Now, the reality <laughs> is, hey, don't laugh this off. We've only got 15 seconds left. And at the end of the day, oh. you try to be the number one guy in front of the Tycoon, and I had to put you in your place. But that just isn't going to happen anymore. 
I don't care what Craig West out there at Rise says, you may be the Malik twins, but you won't be able to take on the Tycoon. And that's it, people. Tycoon. Oh, you're not even going to let me retort. <laughs> I'll give you another call. six seconds. Oh, well, the gauntlet's thrown down, my man. And you know what? I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I'm gunning for you. And I'm going to run you down, Tycoon. Because there is everyone says. only one mullet, man. There's only everyone enough space that. on the mic for one. Everyone says that. The I'm line is long. Bring home a packed lunch with you. Well, you used to make sandwiches, so that's quite easy for you to do. Make sure you're ready. You know. Well, I think you should go home, sunshine. You should go home. Well, no, no, I'm telling you, well, you know, home, I, hey, you know, I work from home because I'm amazing. And you're not! <laughs> All right, but Santiago, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, even though I'm so upset that I'm not in a rise at the moment or Tidal, or any of these other places. I don't care. No, I don't I'm, work for Tidal. Uh, I don't basically, care if you work for them. fuck Tidal. Fuck Tidal. That's yeah, right, Tidal. I'm coming to work for you now. Gonna, just but, because but, Santiago but, says but, so. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the unbookables, yeah? There's a couple of us <laughs> out there. We're the unbookables. We don't give a fuck, mate. We don't give a fuck. We're going to do our thing. You know, uh, if YouTube, you're watching this, I'm going to try and bleep this out. You know, like, you monetize me. <laughs> <laughs> Go to, but uh, just in case, Santiago, just uh, very quickly, your um, places to follow you, like Twitter, Instagram. Uh, yeah, uh, at mulletman1982 on the Twitter, uh, Santiago Professional MC on the Facebook. Um, if you want to book me, bookings for Santiago at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, that's me. That's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And don't worry, I will see you in the circuit and I will get my, well, ability hey, to you, go back to school. Bring, you bring the Wolf of Brawl Street with you and we'll have a, uh, we'll have a hip-hop throwdown. Yeah, I'll also bring his hype man, Kieran Corrupt, as well, the civilised citizen. I'll bring oh, them absolutely. all down. <laughs> but it's been an absolute pleasure. Fantastic. Take care of yourself. Great talking to you, Taiku. Take care. Bye. See you later. So our 10 minute match is over and done with. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, more importantly, me. If you like this video, hit the like, hit the subscribe, check out some of the other videos, check out some of the links that I'm on, either on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I'm on there. Follow me, like me, like the page, do what you need to. And if you can help me pay off the fines, go to my Patreon. The links will be in the descriptions below but definitely go to the Patreon. There's some big things coming up and I would like to grow this channel and I would like to grow this. But I can only do it with your help. So, if you know how to take a little bit of money out, put it into you know, the Patreon, good. Because guess what? I pay off my fines a lot faster and more importantly, I can then build up into a proper studio with proper uh, editing people. And right now, they don't want to work for pennies. Stupid sods. Um, anyway, back, to, uh, back to, to you guys. Please, like, subscribe, share, put the link out on Facebook by all means. Anywhere that you like to, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, if you're a woman. Hey, I don't discriminate, I love my chicks. Um, and again, thank you so much for tuning into the show. More importantly, I hope that you guys feel very happy with it. If I get to 20 views, that's great because guess what? I'll get a special feature out and that'll be exclusively on Patreon. And more importantly, if you guys do not understand anything that I said, then you'll need to go back to school. So it says, the tycoon. <laughs>